Round three of the British National Points series about to get underway at Matterley Basin. And for the power pervs, we've got power data. So if you're wondering how hard is the start of an XC race, it is bloody hard. It is full gas. This was, I was going as hard as I could go. Like, I had nothing left to give here. This was full, full send. And I could not move up. We got squeezed a little bit here. Lad almost hits the barrier, which slows me down. And then I've had to spike up again to try and move up. Oh, I came into this race. This is my first expert race. I was like... Holy cow, this is intense. But look, you can see here, I'm starting to try and move up now. You want to try and get, this was a long, long drag up past pits. It's uphill the whole way and then it drags along before we get into the single track. You want to get into the single track near the front. So you can see I am doing absolutely everything I can to move up. We are what, like 60 seconds into the race and my heart rate has hit 181. Bearing in mind, it is very rare that I see over 188 max heart rate. So I am absolutely full chap right now in the hurt box. And I'm thinking to myself, are you an absolute numpty? Have you gone too hard? But this is what it's about. You've got to go full beans. You've got to put an effort in off the start line and just give it a whack. Look along here. I'm just like... I'm doing mad watts more than I've ever done in an XC race, I think. Oh, also, my average power for this race was like 235 watts. When I looked at that after, I was like, I can't believe that was the hardest 235 watts of my life. But you can see I'm moving up here. I'm just trying to get as far up as I can before we hit this single track. So we're about to go into the single track. The course was an absolute mud bath. So you can see people going up the right, dive bomb in the corner. You've got to love it. And a sneaky little move by Georgie Boy there on the inside. On the inside of Joe as well. See you later. Don't worry, he comes past me and absolutely rips my legs off in a minute. But I had an absolute nightmare when we came into this muddy section. It was slip and slide. I didn't do a practice lap. That was a schoolboy. I got onto this bit. There was like one little line. The lad in front of me makes a mistake and I get this horribly wrong. I think it's just here. He makes a mistake. I hit the brakes. I get it sideways, almost in the bush, like... You just cannot afford to do that. So I literally lost a place there. And then you're spiking back up. When you're in the single track, one thing I've learned recently, it is not about how fast, you, well, it sort of is about how fast you can go, but look at that, that is terrible, that's shocking. But smooth is fast. It's about letting it flow around these corners. And when I watch Ben and some of the elite boys, they just let it flow. Me, I'm like a, a bull in a china shop. I think that's the saying. I don't let it flow. And I sort of rely on power to sprint out of every corner to get as much speed as possible. Yes, I'm going faster than I used to because go on, foot out, flat out, love it. Yes, I'm going faster, but I'm using fitness. You should be using these single track bits to recover, try and save as much energy for when you get to the climbs. Look, I'm letting the wheel go, letting the wheel go. And then what do I do when I come out the corner? I've actually, I've taken that corner fairly well. But I come out the corner and look, I'm spiking up to 700 watts. There's only so many times my twiddly little legs are capable capable of that i am not elite level i can tell you that but look foot out scooting along love it it was so slippy so rooty through here now i know if you raced in the morning or on saturday you got much harder conditions i can only do what the commissaires give me if they change the course because they don't want to see us running that's not my fault i've had all the comments you boys should be the creme de la creme of cycling but look I can only do what I can do but we're going past pit two here and one thing my dad picked up on was down here the elite boys the fast boys keep pedaling by about lap three I was look you can see here I'm probably rolling now yeah I'm rolling he was like the top boys they get on it and they just absolutely nail it. The whole time, when there's a chance to pedal, they're pedaling. I'm not, I don't think I'm quite at that level. But yet again, we're coming into the trees. And 
obviously where I hadn't done a practice lap, I was a little bit wary because when you're going absolutely full chap, you're just thinking, just stay on two wheels. But I can't see what position I'm in here. I'm probably like up into the top 10-ish now, but I just make too many mis mistakes on this slippery section. Look, foot out again, love it, little scoot. I make a mistake, what happens again? I'm spiking up, burning matches. I think my normalised power was like 298 for this for an hour and a half, which in my, I think is really good for me. It's not good enough to be at an elite level yet, but hopefully I can work on that, be more efficient through the single track and stuff like that. But we're coming into the first main climb here. God, Joe got his foot out all the time, and this is where I make a monumental mistake. I absolutely rip it up this climb. I should have gone to the to the right of this rider. I decide to go to the left. I'm now in the grass, absolutely burying myself. And the grass only gets thicker, and I'm still in the grass. And if you've ever ridden through grass, look how thick that grass is. What are you doing, George? And people are going past me. I'm doing like 500 watts. I'm still in the thick grass. Move over, you numpty. But finally, I've moved over. And this, for me, was the worst part of the course. Riding through grass, for some reason, is my nemesis. You feel like you're putting out the world of power, giving it absolute beans, and it just feels like you're going nowhere. Look, you can see I'm losing the wheel, and I'm thinking... Come on, dig deep now, George. Look, heart rate's at 185. I think my max for this race was 186. So you can see the front of the group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I've just dropped back into ninth. So Alex has overtaken me now. And this is the same Victoria Sport rider that absolutely ripped my legs off at Southern XC a couple of weeks ago. So I was like, oh, here we go again. The wheels are about to fall off for Georgie boy. And look, I'm letting gaps go. And it's honestly because I was in a world of hurt. But the thing is, in this race, I was... Well, I think I was climbing quite well. I picked the hard tail as the biker choice. I'm going to show you the full first lap before we get into some of the other action, just so you can get a feel for it. But yeah, I felt like I was climbing quite well here. Look, you can see me shutting down the gap, but after watching it back, and that's the great thing about being able to watch back these, these races, although I've put this big effort in to shut down the gap, Maybe if I'd paced it better and just stayed at a solid, solid pace the whole way up the climb, I wouldn't then get dropped again when I went into the single track. After the race, I came away, I was like, oh my God, I was climbing so well. But not to blow smoke up my own backside or anything. But if you watch this bit, I've managed to close that gap down that I let open. But I think where I'd pushed so hard up the climb, I was then having to try and recover in the single track. And then I couldn't rely on those big, big spikes out of the corner. Well, big, big, big spikes, 500 watts, big spikes, animal. Like, look, I'm only getting up to 300 now and I'm letting the wheel go again. And you just can't afford to keep doing this. So maybe I think my pacing needs to be a little bit better. Uh, but one thing I've noticed going up into the expert category is just everyone is good now. Everyone is fast. They all train hard. They're all animals, all little spike there. And you've got to be on the pedals throughout. If there's a chance to pedal, you've got to pedal. And you can't let the wheel go through the single track because there's only so many times you can close the gaps on the climbs. But thankfully, after I absolutely blew my biscuit at Southern XC in my first expert race and didn't feel well enough, etc., and got cramp, this time I think I mastered it. I got my fuel him right I didn't cramp up which you'll be pleased to know but look you can see here I'm sort of not really closing that gap down I'm I'm at like this is sort of like my tempo power but I shouldn't have let that wheel go it is a fundamental mistake it's especially on the single track so there's still work for me to do I think my power my fitness without 
blowing too much smoke is pretty good, but there's still work to do on the single track. Don't let the wheel go. And I think I need to start practicing it at a high heart rate. It is completely different. So look, look at the mud. I mean, people are gonna say it's not muddy. That's muddy, get over it. But we're coming into the last descent of the course now, and you can see I'm absolutely ripping the head off it again burning matches left, right and centre to close that gap down that I stupidly let open. But you can see the problem was I managed to let my heart rate get back down. And to be honest, this was the only real descent of the course. It was a little bit slippy at the bottom, but look, I've managed to bridge back on. And I know that the next part of the course is absolute hell. We go up what I can only describe as a brick wall of a climb when you come round this right hander. Look at this. This was a real climbers course. Real strong boys were absolutely ripping it up here. But look at this. I'm absolutely putting down everything I've got right now. The heart rate's going to be like ping, ping, ping going up in a second. But I'm just like, holy cow. We are one lap in to, I think it was seven lap race. I'm thinking... Your man's going to be cramping at the end of this because it is full on. I thought about going round here, but I, the one thing I did think to myself is there's honestly no point because the next bit is that start straight you saw that drags up. So sometimes there's an element of just sitting in, playing the game a bit. I can't say I'm sitting in, my heart rate's at 183. I am in a world of hurt right now, one lap in. But there's like a little bit of single track here. That is essentially the full lap. And I think I am just about inside the top 10 now. I'm probably sitting about ninth or 10th after the first lap. So super pleased with that. So you can see here I'm sitting in, heart rates at 186, boys at the front are giving it the ponies. Look, I dread to think what power they're doing at the front if I'm like, doing nearly 300 watts in the wheels at time. But that was the thing. And you can see here, look, the boys let this poor soul drag us up there and then nip past him at the end to get into the single track first. But yet again, I was having nightmares on the slip and slide. Look at me all over the place. Get in that little groove. Jesus, son. And you just can't afford to make these mistakes. Look, another mistake here. Gaps are opening. What am I going to have to do? Sprint to try and catch back up. And you can't afford to do that. End of story. You've got... I'm going to be doing more single track practice. I'm probably going to try and do it when the heart rate's high as well because that is where I'm going to have the biggest benefit. Because look, I'm letting the wheel go again. And although it's not much, the effort in XC racing to close down that tiny... like. If you're on the road, you'd look at that gap and be like, that's nothing. You could close that in seconds. I mean, I have managed to close it, but you know, more mistakes are going to creep in. But you really have to put an effort in to close down the smallest of gaps. And here is where we light it up. We have moved up. We're going to start moving up places here now. So the, the guy on the left in baggy kit, what a hero. He's an absolute animal. Start of the race, he led it out. Full respect. And he's got baggies on. Like, the aerodynamic loss, mate. Come on, put some lycra on. Be a lycra chopper like myself. But straight away here, I can see Alex has just gone off the front. And I'm like, I've got a bridge over to that. I am not letting him rip my legs off again. And thankfully, my climbing prowess on the day, or whatever you want to call it, pulled through. Oh, I hit higher than 186. Look, 187. I buried myself to bridge across there and what happens again where I buried myself so much I let the wheel go at watching this back is just like why are you doing that but yet again I managed to close it down and I'm like this is it I'm just gonna push on now see what I can do that was the thing I was having to let my heart rate recover and I don't know, do you need to pace an XC race? Maybe, but I'm on the front here, towing the boys up like a hero, putting myself in the hurt box, and this happened two or three laps. Along comes Ashley, dive bombs me down the inside, cheeky little move, and he comes to the front. I tow him up the climb the old way, and then he jumps through me. 
jumps past me at the end because he knows that I'm a chopper in the single track. But look, see, he really pressed on after that and he was putting me in the hurt box through the single track, just trying to stay on, hold the wheel. And this was a really important bit in the race. Ashley was the guy that was with Alex that dropped me at Southern XC as well. And I was like, you've got to, these are the points in the race where you've got to dig in, make it hurt. But look, I was climbing a lot. Like, I am Nino Scherter today up the climbs, but I am a chopper on the descents. Look, I'm moving up past the boys. I'm just trying to close that gap down because I can see Ashley's pushing on up ahead and I did manage to close the gap down. What do I do? I think to myself, go on, Georgie boy, go straight past him, put the power down, bury yourself up this climb. And that is what I did do. But you know what's going to happen. You're then going to get overtaken as you come into the single track. Shocker. Because I, I think that was just a pure pacing issue. Look, so this was the group now, the main group. We were all battling for sixth place. This was huge for me. During the race, I had no idea I was in this position. I wasn't because it's quite confusing because elite, junior and expert all go off at the same time. But... If I'd known, well, it wouldn't have made any difference because I was pushing as hard as I could. Look, I felt like I was giving it everything up these climbs and the boys were just nipping me at the end coming into the single track. And then I was being the numpty that was dragging us all the way up that long climb up past pits, I was going on the front. At one point, I think I flipped my elbow and they looked at me as if to say, this ain't a road race now, sonny boy. And look, what happens again? They all come past me just before the single track because they are smart, smart men, unlike myself. But yet again, look, I think I make a mistake there. Wheel slips out, let the wheel go, and I'm chasing back on. These little mistakes, if I can iron them out, I, I really do feel like I can... I can make some big progress in this expert category and maybe even break into the top five. Spoiler alert, obviously I don't get top five because us three are battling for sixth here. Yet again, I'm like, I, I just get so excited sometimes. When the pace eases a bit, I'm like, I'm going to go to the front. Swing me chopper for a bit. But honestly, all that it done was made it easier for them up the climb and then they'd come back past me just before the single track. But we're coming into the last little stretch of the race now and it was painful. We're over halfway now. The battle for sixth is seriously on and I'm trying to pop gels. Look, same again. I'm dragging the boys up up the drag and I think in a minute it might be now we get overtaken by the elite boys and I said to Joe Blackmore before this race do not lap me whatever you do oh no it's not this section sorry this was me putting in an effort to make sure that I got into that single track first get in there my son I got into the single track first and this lasted all of a split second. Blink and you'll miss it. I'm leading the boys. And then blink and Ashley comes straight past me. <laughs> I am a... I'm still a chopper through the single track. I'm putting it out there. I gave it the absolute beans to get in first. And it was totally wasted energy because... When he came past me, I was like, holy cow, that was a bad idea, putting that little effort in to try and get past. But yet again, I just dug in, dug in, and he was putting me in the hurt box. Look at this, 600 watts. Like, I know it wasn't for long, blink and you'll miss the 600 watts, but even at like 400, 500 watts, some big, big numbers from your boy. But I am... Digging in now with everything I've got. What, we're 57 minutes in. So I think after this one, we've got two more laps. You can see he's taking a drink. I think we're all having a breather here because it was, it was full on this course. If you weren't climbing like an absolute madman, like up here, you would get him put in the hurt box through the single track every lap. And this was my mistake every lap. I kept coming to the front and dragging the... The boys up past pits. I'd have been better off sitting in. But this is the, the clip I was talking about a second ago where Joe Blackmore comes past me um, with the other lad. I've forgotten his name now. Sorry. Oh, Charlie Aldridge. 
Look, blink and you'll miss them. The speed these elites go at, I want to put it out there. Joe just comes seventh in Nova Mesto under 23. And Charlie Aldridge was a world champion as a junior. So they're animals. Look how fast they get away from me here. It is inspiring to watch. Look. There's nothing I can do about that. What power are you putting out, boys? Like, that was my moment of glory, getting to, to see them. And I, at the time, I was like, jump on and they'll tow you along. And, yeah, absolutely zero chance of that happening. But it is so inspiring to see that. Look, yet again, Ashley's pipping past me to get in the single track first. A lot of respect. He was flying on the single track. But I was just... I felt like on the day I was maybe climbing a little bit better than him. Uh, I've seen some of his posts and he said he, he was struggling with, with his legs on the climbs and stuff. But look here... I am put he's putting out the berries. I'm putting out the berries. I'm going past. And what am I doing? I'm dragging him up to the top. And I think it was this is this this is the second to last lap now. So I'm like, just get into the single track first. Get into the single track. Hold him up. Do not let him put you in the hurt box through the single track. And I just about managed to do that. And that was the key thing for me. I started to it started to click in my little pea brain towards the end that I needed to get into the single track first because then I could set my pace rather than trying to chase them down. But little things to work on. You can see here I am. This is the big battle for sixth place off the front again and unfortunately my GoPro doesn't have enough battery and me and Ashley had a monumental chopper off up the last little climb and I managed to just about get the better of him up that steep climb. He came round me, he then sat up, I kicked again. I'm gutted I didn't get it on camera because it was legendary but it was wicked racing those boys. I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into racing. It was brutal. I'll pop my average powers and stuff on the screen. You can see it. I felt like I worked a lot harder than that. But to come away with sixth place in my first expert race, super, super happy. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one where hopefully I won't be as much of a chopper through the single track.